Hey everyone, in this video we'll be solving this problem that came in 1998. So, so let's start reading the question. So we have a wedge whose mass is m and the cross section is triangular. So it's moving towards a left with a velocity v, which is constant, towards a sphere whose radius is r and it is fixed to the ground. So the sphere is fixed and the table is smooth, so there is no friction involved in this case. And the wedge, it makes an elastic collision with the fixed sphere and it returns along the same path. So there is no toppling here or like, there's no rotation here involved in this question. So, and we have to neglect all friction and we have to suppose that the wedge remains in contact with the sphere for a very short time, delta t. So basically when the sphere uh, applies a force on, on the wedge, it is for the time duration of delta t. So in that case, we have to find the force F and yeah, also one more important thing, the force F that the sphere applies on the wedge is constant. Okay, so it's not a variable force. So we have in the first option, we are required to find the force F and the normal force N, which is exerted by the table on the wedge. So let's discuss. So again, this is a, the sphere is fixed and let's say the line of action of force F is like this. Now, this is an equilateral triangle. So this angle would be 60 degrees. So we can find the height of this triangle to be 2R sine 60, which is R root 3, which basically means this triangle is shorter than the sphere. So yeah. Now, as the contact force will be perpendicular to the face of the wedge, we know this angle would be 60 degrees right or we can say this is 30 degrees and it's given that the collision is elastic which means e would be one for this case and which means the approach velocity and the separation velocity between the two objects which are going to collide is the same now before collision this wedge was approaching the sphere with a velocity v which means after collision they have to move away from each other with a velocity of v now, as a sphere is fixed, there's only one way in which that happens is if the wedge moves away from the sphere with a velocity v. So this would be the after condition. Okay, so now in order to find, we need to find the value of force f. And for that, we are going to be using the impulse momentum theorem. Right, because the force F is acting for a very short duration delta T on the wedge and hence we can use the impulse momentum. Hence the force is impulsive. So first of all, let's just write the impulse due to friction force F. So we are writing it along the X direction in this case. So the impulse due to force F, actually the, it will be F cos 30, right? Because we, because we have to write the horizontal component of it. So integral F cos 30 dt from zero to delta t, this would be the impulse of the horizontal component due to F. And this would be equal to the change in momentum uh, of the body. So that would be mv minus minus of mv. Now, if you solve this, now as we know the force F is constant, we can take it out of the integral. So we'll get the value of modulus of force F to be four mv upon root three delta t. <coughs> they ask the value of the friction force uh, as a vector form. So it will be 4 mv upon root 3 delta t times cos 30 i cap, right? Cos 30 i cap, that would be root 3 by 2 i cap. And it's, and in this problem, they've given the z axis to be upwards. So it will be minus sine 30 k cap. So this is the value of the force f. We've also asked, asked the value of the normal. Now the normal is pretty simple. So you can just see it from the FBD. There is only two vertical forces, F sine 30 and the MG. So the normal would be just equal to both of them. And F sine 30 would be for two MV upon root three delta T plus the weight of the wedge. The direction would be in the K cap direction. So this is the force of normal. Now in the next part of the question, they have given, let H denote the perpendicular distance between the center of mass of the wedge 
and the line of action of force f which basically means in this case we assume the line of action to be this way so and this is the center of mass of the wedge they're given this perpendicular distance to be h in that case we need to find the magnitude of the torque due to the normal force about the center of the wedge okay so we need we need to calculate the torque due to normal about the center now why so initially the normal was just like this right it, it the line of action of normal passed through the center now why would the normal shift towards the right it's because if you observe uh, this condition from the cm and let's just say the normal and mg were along the line of action of those forces were along the center of mass we can see there is a moment of this force f about the center of mass which would have which would like tend to tilt the wedge about the center so if let's say the normal had not shifted this whole thing would just topple which we know is not true because it's a, it's given in the question that rotation was to be avoided this would just move this, this would just start sliding towards the right right which means the normal must be sh shifting towards the right by some distance in order to balance the moment due to the force f so as we know the net torque about the center must be zero the net torque about the center of mass should be zero which means the torque of normal plus the torque due to force f equal to zero because the torque of mg is anyway zero right because it's passing through the center of mass so they just ask the magnitude of it so we can write the magnitude of torque of normal is the same as the magnitude of the torque due to force f and torque due to force f is very easy to write because they've given the perpendicular distance to be h so it will be the force times the perpendicular distance so it will be f into h which would be 4 mv by root 3 delta t times the height h okay so that was this problem if you, if you enjoy the video please like and thanks for watching guys